specialists. We are more than planners. So, who are we? We are problem solvers, providing the highest quality service and results. We are a team of skilled professionals, focused on customer needs and outcomes. We are 23 years of industry experience, adhering to the highest safety standards. We are Melbourne, and we are right across Victoria. We are the Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. Lanco Group, we are more than you realise, and we are ready to partner with you. Western United Club show coming to you live on FNR Football Nation Radio and proudly presented, as always, by Simmons Homes, the great Australian builder. I'm Josh Parrish. I've got Nick Hughes here me, with me this week. Nick, uh, what a game it was last night. Fantastic entertainment. Maybe a disappointing result as Western United are concerned, but we saw some young players come to the fore. Yeah, absolutely. I think excitement is uh, the word for it. Um, whether or not it was an uh, excitement that we necessarily uh, would have liked uh, <laughs> is another question, but uh, it was excitement nonetheless. Uh, plenty of late goals, a bit of late drama, uh, and, and like you said, some some of the young guys getting a shot and uh, and really making good on that chance as well and, uh, and having a good impact. 2-2 the final score up against uh, MacArthur at Campbelltown Stadium. Nick Milanovic scoring his first ever goal for the club after coming through the youth ranks. Jerry Skatardis will be chatting to today as well, those two boys. Jerry and Milo are going to be joining us a little bit later. It was a well-taken goal. It was. It was lovely, and it was a fantastic build-up as well. Uh, I think it started uh, all the way with Tomoki at, uh, at right back, um, a lovely little counter-attack, a couple of... One touch exchanges, and you know Wenzel Halls was involved. Milanovic was involved in the build up, and Skatardis as well, uh, working together. Obviously, we know um, the the good mates that they are, and uh, and a lovely uh, final ball from Ben Garuccio arriving uh, down the left hand side. And um, as as we've become accustomed to seeing from Nick Milanovic in his uh, his MPL days, he knows where to be in the box mm. to to find a goal, and and it's a an expert little finish, just sticking out a toe and and poking it in and. Uh, he was, he was obviously wrapped uh, after it as well. Well, we're going to hear from him and Jerry a little bit later. Those two have formed a great bond, a great friendship. Have They've moved in together. They've got a good rivalry going on FIFA as well. Yeah, so absolutely. Keen to ask him about that, but uh, always great to see the young players come up and perform on the big stage when they get their opportunity. Uh, we're also going to be talking to Chris Pelivanis, uh, and he's going to tell us a little bit about what's happening in Tasmania at the moment, Nick. Yeah, uh, a big, uh, I guess it's not a big announcement because everyone knows that we're heading back to Tassie this year, but uh, the launch today of uh, the Maccas Festival of Football. Uh, so plenty of uh, media opportunity down in Launceston um, unveiling the, mm. the event that's coming pretty fast. It's just over two months away uh, in the, the middle of April. Two big games uh, against Perth and MacArthur. Uh, down at Utah Stadium, Calder United will be there uh, again as well, uh, and plenty, uh, plenty more action from Football Tasmania and MPL teams down in Tasmania as well. Family fun events and um, you know open training sessions and, and everything that we uh, that we love about the game, getting getting people involved down in Tassie, which is uh, is fantastic. Well, we ourselves were down there last year uh, with FNR, just uh, having a look at what. Uh, Western United are doing in the community in Tasmania and I think the club's honesty here is refreshing as well because they're not trying to come in and say we are Tasmania's team yeah. you know Tasmania should have its own team and they will one day they will have an A-League team uh, but you have to believe in that with the expansion of our game but in the meantime you know 
while the stadium is being built, while there's the travelling roadshow going on, if you want to come down and, and support this team um, and bring some qual- high quality football to your doorstep, then you know, please be our guest. Exactly right, and and that has been the message that yeah, um, yeah, we're we're not taking over Tassie or we're not becoming Tassie, but we're we're giving them that little taste and mm. and hopefully, um, I mean. Obviously, hopefully, um, some fans in Tassie do come on board with with Western United, but um, even more so of a, a, a vision or a goal is that hopefully, you know, this uh, obviously being there last year, coming back mm. this year, not sure if we'll go if we'll we'll be there next year, but hopefully that all you know can continue that push for, as you said, a, a deserved uh, team down in Tasmania. Yeah, absolutely, and maybe some pathways for, for young footballers as well who don't have an A-League team to aspire to in their home state. We're going to take a really quick break here because Chris Palivanis, the CEO of West United, is waiting for us on the other side. So don't go anywhere here on The Green Room, presented by Simmons Homes. Ever wanted a career in football? From TV deals to player transfers, football is now a global, multi-billion dollar industry in need of qualified professionals who know the sport inside and out. Brought to you by the Global Institute of Sport, the Masters of Football Business is delivered by experts from Australia and around the world. Learn online with unique access to networking and guest speaker events at the iconic MCG. Be one of the first Australians to get a football master's degree. Apply now to start in February 2022. Learn more at gis.sport slash fnr. gis.sport slash fnr. have a chance to speak to the CEO of Western United. He comes to us live now. Josh Parrish and Nick Hughes with you here on The Green Room, presented by Simmons Homes, and Chris Pelavanis is on the line. Good evening to you, Chris. Hi, and uh, well, uh, hopefully to all the listeners and uh, just en route to watch the Western Sydney Wanderers with our coaching staff. Doing a bit of opposition scouting, are we, before the match on Saturday? Well, not me, but the other boys are, yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you don't pass on any uh, tips and hints if you pick up on nah. some uh, tactical tweaks that, uh, that Rudes has got them doing during the game? No, nah, no, nah, I'll stay in my lane. I'll stay in my lane. Let the guy do it. <laughs> Leave it to the professionals. That's what we like that's to see. It. That's it. That's it. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting game coming up, uh, coming up against the Western United's former head coach. And, uh, I mean, we're going to talk to the boys, uh, Nick and, and Jerry, about this later. But uh, there's a lot of film familiarity on both sides. You know how he coaches. He knows a lot of your players and how you play. So uh, it's going to be a bit of a battle of the intel, won't it? Yeah, it will be. I mean, it's an interesting one for us. I mean, um Again, it's like three points on offer and it's important for us to, you know, in this part of the season um, to solidify the good start we've made. And so um, it's an important game. And, yeah, I mean, the boys, you know, a bit of a road trip and short turnaround. So um, I'm sure they'll get up. And, um, yeah, I think he does know a lot of our players, but we also have a lot of new familiar mm. new faces in the squad that he won't be familiar with. And, um, you know, I'm sure our guys will put on a good, good outing like they always do. What did you make of the game against MacArthur uh, last night? Um, Milanovic, Thea Harris, Katadis all coming into the starting lineup and, and performing pretty well with the with the big boys. Yeah, I mean Dylan wins the halls, Dylan as well, and Price. I mean, I think I think um, if I sit back and have a look at it as CEO, I couldn't be more happy that you know the whole squad that has done a hard preseason, you know, been there for the senior guys. And being able to make a solid contribution, I think as CEO, you couldn't be more happy that everyone's had a contribution and um, couldn't be more wrapped for the kids. We're a little bit unlucky at the final result. And, you know, um, I'm sure we'll learn from it and we'll grow from it, but it would have been good to get the win. But, you know, uh, uh, you know, if you asked me if we'd get a point before the game, I probably would have said, where do we sign and let's move on. But um, it's, it's an amazing group we're creating. And as you can see, some of these younger 
kids are going to give a solid contribution as you know as the season goes on because we're going to need everybody. Obviously, you're you're up there over the border um, with the team, and you're up there as well uh, in Wollongong for the last uh, away trip. After that sort of string of, of Melbourne games that we had, getting a, a bit of familiarity, obviously a couple in Geelong and a, a few at Amy Park uh, as well. How's the the atmosphere been on uh, on those away trips? You know, do we we sort of feel that we're getting that team bonding, and um, you know, things are are continuing to to grow within the group. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the coaches and the, and the senior playing group and, the, you know, the leadership of Diamante and Risden, um, the culture that got, we've created this year has been amazing. It's been a massive step from, you know, last season um, where we were and where we are now. Um, and, and as a result of all the hard work and the, and the culture we're creating, I think the results are also starting to show. So um, it's something that, that takes hard work. And if you do the hard work, the results start, will fall our way. So... Um, you know, John and his team and, and, you know, the guys, as I said, should be commended. And, um, you know, as I come on these trips, I sit back and just admire and, and observe the hard work we're doing. And I know we're in a really good place. And I know that, um, you know, the green and black family is going to have a, a lot to celebrate this season. And uh, a, a big uh, announcement sort of off the pitch, if you like, today as well. Um, the, the official launch of the Maccas uh, Festival of Football, something that's obviously really uh, important for the club. Um, you know, take us through what's going to be on offer th- this year and, and how exciting it is for the club to, to return to Tassie. Yeah, Tassie's super important. You know, last year we went there and we set some foundations and this year it's important we go another step. Um, you know, we really want to engage with the local community there and the football community there. And, you know, we've got the family festival there and we're going to do a lot of activations. And not only that, we'll also have, you know, two two senior A-League men's games there along with um, some other curtain raises, which will include some elite women's football as well. So um, we're really excited what Tasmania has got to offer for us. Um, we love going there and, you know, um, we want to create a fortress there. Last year, we walked away with four points um, in our two games there. And we, we believe that, you know, again, we can use that as a real big competitive advantage, A, to grow um, the club off the field, but on the field also to use it as a big competitive advantage. So just encouraging all our Tasmanian family and friends to join us on that trip. And um, hopefully a lot of people also venture, venture down from Melbourne. So it's going to be an exciting weekend over the Easter break. And I'm looking forward to getting there as soon as possible. Aside from what the club can get out of it, uh, what do you think Tasmania and, and Tasmanian football fans can get out of, you know, Western United coming and playing on their doorstep and running events like this? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So we're working hand in hand with um, Football Tasmania um, to create some longer term um, uh, benefits for the for the for the state and and for the region. So. We're working with them, you know, to create some capabilities off the field to, you know, when they do get an A-League team, so they've got, um, they're aware of, you know, the resources and the requirements required to, you know, put on, you know, an A-League men's and women's program. Um, We're working with them to also create elite development pathways for their kids to, you know, have an opportunity to play at the elite level until they get an A-League team. So, um, and also, you know, the ability to interact with the current day stars. So... Um, there's a lot of interactions at the moment, but it's something that's going to continue to grow and we're working hand in hand with Football Tasmania and the Tasmanian government to make this really rewarding for all the people of Tasmania. And Mark Tolcaso's Calder United women's team are going to be uh, making the trip down as well. Uh, affiliated club of Western United, of course. Uh, how excited are you, uh, are you to see them in action at, at Utah Stadium? It's super, you know, when we went into this venture with Calder, we had a dream and that that dream is going to come into reality and it's about giving girls of the Western exposure, you know, and giving them those opportunities is something that, you know, we can only dream of. So um, that's another step. And, you know, as we all know, next season we'll also have our WA League women's team in action and this is a good opportunity for some of those um, girls to put their foot forward to be into that squad as well. So... Um, I'm super excited and any time we give um, our young female athletes an opportunity to be on the big stage is only a good thing. I, th- I think the, the great thing about Tassie is it really, you know, it's, um, as it says on the label, it's the festival of football, you know, obviously the, the two A-League men games sort of headline uh, that week or weekend, but 
you know, we really are including uh, all areas of football. We mentioned Colty United and you mentioned some of the work that's going on to help uh, Tassie sort of prepare for uh, when or if hopefully they get their own franchise. We've seen already five um, youth players from uh, South Hobart uh, come across and, and take part in a week's training uh, and a match as well uh, with the academy. Um, so, again, how, how important is that to keep growing those connections at, at the academy level uh, as well as the, that elite level? super important and, and that's why we do these things and you know that's why the Tassie government gets involved that's why the football Tasmania gets involved because you know creating opportunities for young Tasmanians to come and trial with us not only gives them an op- a great opportunity great experience but it also gives us an opportunity to you know work with some new talent that you know hasn't been on our doorstep so I love those opportunities and that's why we do the things we do and you know, we, we want to give all the kids in the West an opportunity, but if we can extend it to our, our family and friends in Tassie, that's that's something that is equally as important for us. How important, how important has David Clarkson been in this in this equation? And we knew he was he was involved in the kind of Tasmania um, uh, part of the uh, process and, and trying to get some some pathway set up. Oh, look, I'd like to say he hasn't done anything and because it's his <laughs> birthday, hey, but no. <laughs> Yeah, happy birthday to David if he's listening as well. But um, no, David's integral, not only the stuff he's doing in Tasmania, but all the, all the stuff he's doing in our community. David has a rich history in football in Victoria and Tasmania. And what happens with that is he, he's, he's got an ability to engage with the community and help us build something really special, not just for today, but for the future. And that's what's really important. So um, I think the work that David's doing you know, you can see a little bit of it now, but a lot of it will be seen in the future when we start to see some of these, you know, young kids coming through in the community and, you know, our fan base increasing. And the NPL season is not far away, of course. So Colter United will be playing, but also uh, the youth, the NPL three side who are gearing up for it. They had a friendly win over the football empowerment uh, development squad uh, on the weekend. Uh, are you uh, optimistic about this season's promotion chances? We know the, the side was so, so close to something special before the season was unfortunately cancelled due to, to due to the COVID lockdown. Yeah, no, I'm very optimistic for both our Calder our MPL team and our um, the MPL three sides. Uh, Anthony Frost and Mark DeCasso are doing a fantastic job, you know, leading their coaches and their players. Um, but I'm also very optimistic that we're going to unearth some more talented players for both our A-League men's and women's team. And that's that's critical. So promotion is not the only thing, but it's also um, a platform for us to continue to develop elite talent. So I'm really excited. And I was out there on the weekend when the uh, boys took on the football empowerment squad and what a day it was. What an opportunity for both sides. And there was some elite talent on both teams and just a, such an exciting opportunity, something that we, you know, we want to continue to do going forward who is working with both our young kids and obviously the um, football empowerment community as well. Really is looking like uh, an exciting next few months for the club. You know, sitting top of the table is uh, is never a bad thing. Um, heading to Tassie, Ballarat is in less than a month. MPL seasons are, are starting up. So uh, I guess from your point of view, leading this club, how how important, how inspiring is the work that's already been done and how does that uh, sort of motivate everyone at all levels of the club to, to keep pushing forward uh, and keep achieving great things, you know, not only in the next few months and uh, until the, the end of, of the 21-22 season, but, you know, going forward in the months and years ahead as well? No, it's a, it's super exciting and, and, look, I'm I'm very proud and, you know, the stuff that we're achieving both on and off the field is due to the hard work of all our staff and all our uh, West United family. Um, but I'm super excited what's what's to come. And, you know, I know we're top of the league. It's a long season, but you've got to remember where we're coming from too. You know, we came from a long way back. And, you know, the culture and the foundations that are being set under John Aloisi and the team is, is something that not only will be um, fruitful for this season, but seasons to come. Well, we know you've got to make kickoff there, Chris, so we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for making the time. Uh, enjoy the game tonight and enjoy the game coming up this weekend for Western United playing against Western Sydney Wanderers on Saturday afternoon. Uh, yeah, thanks. That's very important and um, it's an important game this week and we're obviously away next week against Sydney FC, but then we'll have a couple of home games 
um, to come after that, which will be very important for us. So really important period for us um, on the field over the next couple of weeks. And hopefully we solidify the good start we've made in the season. Well, top of the table, you're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys, and thanks for all the support. Chris Pellavanis joining us here on The Green Room. We're going to take another quick break. And on the other side, a couple of young starlets joining us to talk about uh, their first team experience and exposure uh, during that exciting game against MacArthur, a two-all draw, but Nick Milanovic scoring his first goal for the club, Jerry Skatardis playing an integral role in that goal as well. Those two great mates and teammates will be joining us on the other side of this break. We are more than engineers. We are more than project managers. We are more than surveyors. We are more than infrastructure specialists. We are more than planners. So, who are we? We are problem solvers, providing the highest quality service and results. We are a team of skilled professionals, focused on customer needs and outcomes. We are 23 years of industry experience, adhering to the highest safety standards. We are Melbourne, and we are right across Victoria. We are the Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. Lanco Group, we are more than you realise, and we are ready to partner with you. Launch your global career in football business. Study a master's degree online with unique access to the MCG and a big-hitting Australian industry network. Brought to you by the Global Institute of Sport, who also have campuses at the iconic Wembley Stadium in London and Etihad Stadium in Manchester. Be one of the first Australians to get a football master's degree and join GIS's global network of football leaders. Apply now to start in February. February 2022. Learn more at gis.sport slash FNR. That's gis.sport slash FNR. Football Nation Radio, the official Western United Club show, presented as always by Simmons Homes, the great Australian builder. I'm Josh Parrish. I'm here with Nick Hughes, and we've got a couple of special guests joining us, Nick. Absolutely, we do. Uh, a big game last night uh, and a big opportunity for some of the younger lads in the team, uh, in particular one uh, joining us right now. It had a, a night to remember, I'm sure. Uh, we've got uh, Nick Milanovic and Jerry Skatardis. Welcome to the green room, guys. Thanks, guys. How are Thanks you? Thanks for us. Well, you've come as a package deal. Uh, you both played last night. I'll ask you each in turn who had the better game. We, I, I think we both played good. We both had a good performance. Oh, very diplomatic. <laughs> as soon as as soon yeah. as we started recording, all the uh, the banter went out the window, and they were consummate <laughs> professionals. It's all, that's, all, yeah, always that's, team that's, first. That's the the media training in Western United. We um <laughs> we do our job. <laughs> so it was your first goal for the club, uh, Milo. Take us through it. What do you remember from the the passage of play? How did it feel when you stuck it in the back of the net? It was uh, it was actually really surreal. Like it was a really good feeling because like it's all you. It's because you come off the bench so many times, thinking, "Oh, I'm going to score. I'm going to score." And just you like don't get the chance in, that, in those minutes. So when I was starting, I was like, oh, okay, like I can actually get one today. And luckily it was just, it was a really good play and Benny put it on a platter. If I missed that, it would have been spewing. <laughs> I know uh, around the around the training ground and stuff, you're a, you're a big fan of the Sioux. So I was uh, I was yeah, expe I was expecting yeah. it to come out, but uh, but it didn't. Was it oh, was that yeah, just adrenaline yeah, or? Yeah. No, we made an agreement. Uh, with the boys, that only comes out if it's if it's a if it's a bomb. Yeah. If, it's, if, it's, if it's a bomb or a bicycle or a backhill or something crazy, then they'll come out. 
right, I like it. I look forward to it then. When did you know you were starting? Take us through the, the process. When did um, the, the coach tell you you were in? Well, we had our game. Yeah, we had our game and we knew that, like, the game was three days later. So we like, oh, we might actually have a sniff, like, of getting in the lineup. So, yeah, we got to training and we're just, yeah, we're just, like, a bit, like, oh, are we, we going to start? Are we not going to start? And then we have done patterns and we're in, that, we're in that starting lineup and it was just, it was, yeah, we're buzzing, both of us. Jerry, you've, you've already made your breakthrough into the first team early along the line. Uh, were you uh, ribbing some of your younger teammates a little bit, saying, uh, what about your catch-up? No, I'm not like that. I'm a nice guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was good. Even, like, Chrissy got his starting debut. Um, yeah, so it was good for most of us. Nice. So what's the difference in, in quality and in, I guess, atmosphere and pressure like when you're actually in a first-team game versus playing with the MPL lads or playing in training? I would say it's hard because different players, you know, like they react to different things. I think just the main thing is just to stay calm and play your own game. That's the thing I would say. What about your first few touches, Milo, when you're on the pitch? Are you, were you nervous at all or does it go straight back to, to instinct um, yeah, as soon my, as possible? My, my, first, my first touch went straight out. <laughs> and I, was, I, was, I was, yeah, I was a bit head lost. I was like, oh no, like don't start like that. And then just played a bit safe, got into the game and yeah. And then, then it started coming. Yeah, so. For for both of you uh, coming into the midfield for the match, um, obviously Nick um, coming in primarily in the, the Diamante position, I can imagine they're pretty big shoes to fill. And, and Jerry, for yourself, more of the, the Neil Kilkenny role, who I think I'm correct in saying hadn't missed a minute uh, of the season prior to that. Um, so I guess both of you, um, uh, an answer each, how... How was that in in terms of filling those shoes and, and stepping into the lineup in 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 the places of those guys? Yeah, well, everyone knows Diamante, his quality, so it was it was um, big shoes to fill. But no, nah, he he spoke to me as well before the game. Told me just like like you play on the second team in training, where there's no pressure and you and you, you just play a game. Just do the same thing. Be calm, confident, attack, get in the box. Like don't overcomplicate things. And so, yeah, he said to me, he's like, you do all that, you score. So then half time, he comes to me and he's like, I, I, I told you. I told you that. <laughs> but yeah, it he was, he was, he was buzzing for me, which was really good. Easy for him to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. And Jerry? Well, for me, Kilkenny's probably been the best midfielder in the league for probably a while now. So, yeah, I look up to him at training every day, learn things from him. So it was, yeah, I've tried to base my game around him. But yeah, it's good to look up to him. So let's rewind a little bit in your careers. How did you make the journey to Western United and, and where did your, your football journey start? I'll start with you, Milo. Um, well, I, st I started uh, at a Croatian club in Sydney called City United. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're aware, yeah, MPL team. And I uh, spent a lot of time there when I was younger. Just It was just a family thing. Like my, my dad played there, like cousins played there, mates played there. So like just a Croatian background, Croatian club sort of thing. So yeah, I played there. Then I um, headed off to, to Western Sydney um, Wanderers from the first year they came out. And I think I was there for, yeah, till I come here. So a good five years, six years. And I was always, yeah, I was always like, yeah, the, the, the smallest player. I was never big, always got pushed around. So then I started hitting a bit of growth spurts and like you could see your, your game develops when you grow. So yeah, then, then I moved here. And ever since then, yeah, it's been it's been good. Enjoyed it. And Jerry, what about your kind of football upbringing? Did you cross paths you two at the Western Sydney Wanderers? Um, um, I don't think so. He played with my brother. Yeah, I played with his younger brother. Yeah. So you yeah. just missed so each other. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I was at Southern Sharks NPL in Sydney. Then I went to Wanderers for I think a couple of years. Then I went to Sydney FC for a couple of years, and then Western. So when did the call come for you to to come down to to Western United? Uh, mine was, I think, first year, just before the season started. So we went October, early October, I think, of 2019. And, and who from the club gets in touch with you? Um, um yeah, just, I, I don't know. It's, it's just, <laughs> yeah, I actually can't remember either. Yeah. Disembodied voice and a burner phone. Your mission, should you choose to accept it. <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the boss, the yeah. old boss, Rudin. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty nice. sure, yeah. 
Um, yeah. Obviously, you, you guys have become um, very good mates now. Did that has that mainly come from your uh, your time at Western United, or and we mentioned it before? Was there any part where you sort of crossed paths and were aware of each other uh, prior nah, to, to we, both of you coming out? No, nah, we met when I moved here because yeah. I was obviously here after him. So yeah, moved here and and yeah, we um, we had the hub in Sydney. Mm-hmm. And I was still getting to know the boys, sort of, and and then after after how we come back, we moved in together. So then, ever since then, we we've yeah, it's it nice. <laughs> that yeah. hub has been talked about by some of the other players as a pretty important kind of bonding experience for the squad. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was a good experience for all of us. Yeah. What was the day to day like? It sounds like it was a bit like a school camp or something. <laughs> so the first the first two weeks well, you weren't you weren't there. No. Yeah. The first two weeks we were in somewhere in Blacktown or somewhere in Sydney and we couldn't leave our rooms, just eat in our rooms for the when first four days. Yeah, you were there. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. First four days we had to eat in our rooms. We did sessions in our rooms. Yeah. Police around the whole Me hotel. Again. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next we did that for two weeks. We're training still, like just training back to the hotel. And then we came to Kuji for like the next four or five weeks. Played the rest of our games and you know it was good that other day. What you're you're back there now, is that's right at the the same place. Yeah, yeah. 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 feels like home. Yeah, yeah. does it is a, a bit of a um, yeah sort of reminiscing of uh, of that time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all, all week the boys have been like buzzing for it because like go back to our old like coffee spots and yeah. and like do like the do the smoothie place down the road. Like everyone's buzzing for it. That's fantastic. fantastic. <laughs> so often when we get young players on that people might not be as familiar with from watching the A League. Uh, we try and get them to ex- like describe their own game and what they're good at. But given there's two of you here and no one likes talking about themselves and bigging themselves up, I think oh. I'll get you to explain each other's games and uh, and what you each of you bring to the team. So first I'll start All with right. you, Milo. What's Jerry like on the pitch? Um, Jerry, Jerry, I, I feel safe when I play with Jerry behind me because he's, he's a good ball winner. He wins the ball. He doesn't back out of challenges. So it's it's you can trust if you get beaten that he'll be there. Um is is as you saw last um yeah yesterday he's, he's calm on the ball doesn't panic which is good so yeah you can you can trust him behind you i think that's where his his game is he's, he's good defensively and he's calm on the ball jerry um i would say he's got a bomb of a left foot by the way <laughs> you do they might Jeez. good no. <laughs> good in the half spaces good left foot good shot Goes forward, always wants to get in the box. That's probably the way he scored last night as well, because he always wants to get in the box. If he sees run, he ran, sprinted past the defender and got there first. So, yeah. Seems to be some complimentary attributes between the two of you. Yeah. Yeah, we played together a bit in the MPL a bit, so <laughs> we know how to play with together. Yeah. Yeah. And that MPL three squad has, has come together, you know, very quickly over the last season. Obviously, you guys are in and out with your first team uh, duties and being on the bench and in those match day squads. So you won't have played the entire season in MPL three, but uh, it seemed to knit together quite quickly and almost on the verge of promotion before the the season got cancelled. Yeah, it was it was unfortunate actually because we yeah that team was really going well, like yeah. they were bonding even when we weren't playing, so they were going well. Like they were, they were a really good side. I think they could have really pushed it for promotion. What do you put that down to? Because you know we've heard from people like Steve Horvat that it was kind of a last minute thing to get all the players ready uh, to to go, and and you know they didn't have much time together in preseason. So so why did that squad hit off? Was it just due to you know happen to have a, a bunch of talented young players in it, or was there were there other factors? I think um, a large part of it was um, their coach Maza. He brought a lot of the boys together. It was fun to be around. All us A League boys loved him. He, um, yeah, he brought a good vibe around, mm-hmm. and all the boys obviously liked him. And yeah, he put a really good squad together. They all gelled, and you can see they're always still hanging out with each other today. Like they're they're all good good mates. So it's it's easier when you're all mates. You know what I mean? Have you been able to keep an eye on uh, any of the MPL guys uh, currently going into this season? Obviously, the I think the season's what a, a month and a half away or so. Have you been able to catch anything? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit harder to watch them because now we're at Essendon, they're mm. still in Carolyn's Brink. So, but we seen last year like Bozanovsky, he came from there, he got a scholarship now, so he's doing well. So yeah, it's good to see the boys come up. Yeah. Does it help when you're making that jump to the first team that you've got a few boys alongside you that you know really well that you've got p- sort of a pre-existing playing relationship with? 
yeah, well, like yeah, for them it would be because like, like I come in, I, I didn't really know anyone other than mm. like uh, Tommy Ushkov was the only one I really knew. So like well, from for, back like, to Sydney United, was that or yeah. just from Croatian? Yeah, 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 Sydney United. So like now Bozza and Ben Collins and Adisu, they've all come up. They've already played with me, Jerry. Like they know a few of the boys, so it was a bit easier for them, like to, to fit in sort of, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I've been looking at some of the social content that Western United have done, and uh, there is a FIFA match on YouTube featuring both of you. Have you had a chance for a rematch? <laughs> oh, yes. <God. laughs> two, two, two nights ago? Yesterday. You no, know, the day before. Yeah. I beat him 1-0, but I should have... Nah, I'm saying... Nah, <laughs> if, if, I'm, nah, if I'm completely honest, we can, we can ask Ben Garuccio, yeah. we can ask Dylan Pieris. I should have won that game. It was the most rigged thing. Missed every <laughs> chance on goal and just couldn't score. And he scored his only shot. Was it Western uh, United uh, versus Western United again? Yeah. No, nah, Jerry's uh, good at FIFA. Jerry's no, good at FIFA. Who was you? I was... Who was I? Chelsea. I was Chelsea. I was Liverpool yeah, I was and, Chelsea. and he was Chelsea. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So so what I'm hearing is we need um, we need a decider then if it's one or... Oh, yeah. I'll play tonight. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah we'll, <laughs> You'll have to let us know. <laughs> yeah, we'll. Do you have Premier League or uh, European club allegiances? Um, oh, well, I'm, I'm a Chelsea fan and he's a Man U fan. So, right. yeah. Man that's, U. We haven't played with those teams yet. I think I think Nick Hughes here was hoping for Liverpool as one of those responses, but well, we'll, we'll let that That's slide. Right. I suppose we, we can accept it. Um, one of, one of the other uh, social bits, one of the more recent ones, was of course you guys did the genius uh, friendship. Uh, get how well do you know your friend challenge? Um, sure, that plenty of the the West United fans watching have seen it. Uh, I wanted to ask. Uh, obviously, you talked about Kuji and. Um, uh, how great that's been for you, um, Milo. I hope uh, I hope you haven't seen any rats crawling around. Uh, actually, oh god, <laughs> I hate rats. I don't like them. But yeah, one popped up once on us, yeah. me and Jerry, and it wasn't it wasn't nice. Oh really? Oh, so so you experienced it firsthand, Jerry? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I was I was I was on the I was on the kitchen table for a second. <laughs> yeah. Housewife in a fifty sitcom style. <laughs> Were you screaming or just yeah. just just keeping your distance? No, I was just I just uh, I just don't like. It. <laughs> I just don't like. It. Are you are, are you the type to to step in, Jerry? Are you the the um, pest control of the of the group? Or? <laughs> you just scared as me. No, I can't do. I don't do bugs. I don't do anything crawly. <laughs> oh, by the way, yeah, um, uh, oh, yeah, in so. Campbelltown yesterday. After was it dinner? Yeah, yeah. After dinner, there was a huntsman above the doorway going in. So. Everyone was like, oh, like I was all right around a few boys, but Jerry was already <laughs> gone. Is there, a, is there an exterminator in the team? Is there someone that steps up and, um, you know, squashes uh, actually, him? You know what? Lockie Wales, you know Lockie Wales very well. Lockie Wales was throwing the power rate caps at him, so he would drop. <laughs> <laughs> that's no way to get rid of a spider. That's a classic Lockie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why it's, am I it's not the surprised? glass jar. And the piece of paper, yep. just fling it outside. Oh, well, I grew up on Warren so I had to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we like to delve into this show about your personalities off the pitch, uh, and you know your interests, your music taste, ex- extracurricular activities. Uh, what kind of hobbies and stuff do you get up to when you're not playing? Obviously, it's hard at the moment to get out and about with the COVID situation and everything. But uh, what, what do you usually get up to off the pitch? We both love a bit of PlayStation. To be yeah. honest, we we play with Painty. We play with Painty. We play with Christian Theo, Dill, Bengariccio. Like a bit of COD, bit of FIFA, a bit of everything. Yeah, we because lo- we've got so much spare time after training, so we're like, oh, we may as well yeah. play some PlayStation all together and a bit of everything. Yeah, Who- PlayStation mostly, mostly. Who's got the biggest future as an esports player? Do you think who's who's the the gun? Oh, I, I, I don't like him him compliments, Who's but it? Jerry for FIFA, yeah, for FIFA, <laughs> Jerry. Well, I call it Judy Chrissy. Oh, yeah, maybe you. Christian Christian Theo's good cod. I'm not bad. Pain, actually, you know what? everyone is everyone, really good. Yeah, actually, to be yeah. fair, they're good. Yeah. I not play that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll have to we'll have to set up some sort of tournament or something at. Uh, at one point, would you both yeah. rank yourself? Uh, obviously, Milo, you said Jerry's up there for FIFA. Would you both rank yourselves among the others as uh, two of the biggest hitters? Um, yeah, I'd say me and Jerry are top two. 
All right, we'll, we'll have to put it to the test. I, I tell you what, we've actually done a little bit of uh, uh, like a FIFA tournament with with players before. We we're, were during the COVID lockdown in, in Melbourne when the MPL Victoria season got suspended. We organised a MPL Victoria um, in 2020, a, a FIFA tournament. So uh, we'll have to do a rematch and we'll, we'll commentate it for you. And then uh, we'll see who emerges as a true cool, champion. West United, West yeah. United one. <laughs> Absolutely. When the when the pressure's really on, who who comes up with the goods? So back to the first team. I mean, obviously, you guys had a fantastic game the other night against uh, against Macarthur with you know some of the younger boys cracking the team, but disappointing to to cough up the two goal advantage at the end of the match. What was the the message coming out of that one? Um, at full time. Yeah. Um, it was. The boss is always positive. Uh, he was just telling us like we keep your head high. It was it was just it was just a mistake. We we'll, mm. we'll tune it up, and it was just one one mistake. Everyone makes mistakes, and yeah, they they just clawed back into it. You could see they were coming after that first goal. So yeah, just like draw together, lose together, basically. And you know you still go top of the table with the points, so it's not not the end of the world, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll take it. Um, but the success that the, the club has built this season has been built on that that solid back line. Do you think you're starting to, to gel up front a little bit with injections of, of youth here and there and uh, starting to score a few more goals? Yeah, I would say so. Like yesterday was the game we scored in two goals mm-hmm. and then the other game scored one. So more games, I think a couple more games and we will gel we'll gel even more with each other. So it should be good. And you're coming up against uh, the Western Sydney Wanderers in your next match and, and your old coach in Mark Rudan who's just been announced there. Is that going to be an interesting one, facing him on the on the sideline? Or do you just not think about that during games? Yeah, it will. No, it will, it will be. It's going to be interesting what he does because, yeah. like, Does he obviously know, they're there. He knows, he knows most of us anyway. Yeah, he knows how we play. Like, he knows our, our strengths and weaknesses as players. So, and you know how he coaches as well. So it's yeah. it's going to be a very familiar affair. <laughs> see uh, who comes out on top in the in the tactical battle. We've yeah. uh, yeah. we we often see that that sort of new coach turnaround in the immediate aftermath when when a new coach starts. Obviously, the Wanderers have um, probably had a, a less than ideal start um, by by their standards. Are you guys um, you know looking at this as a as a big game and? Uh, obviously taking them seriously as as you would any game but um yeah how i guess how seriously are you taking them based on the the form uh the form that they've had to start the season and then you know this this new managerial change i think um when a new coach comes in as well most of the all the players want to prove something try and get the wins for the fans and especially get the trust of the coach so i think it'll be a good battle for both teams that we get yeah, I mean, they're also like not a side based on paper that you'd think would be at the bottom of the table as well. Like they've got yeah. some quality in that team, so you can expect to respond. You can't take a team like that lightly, of course. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, and so, how long is this away trip for you guys? When you, where's your next home game? I know that victory match has been postponed due to the uh, uh, the FFA Cup final, uh, but away to Sydney FC and then at home again against the Western Sydney Wanderers, so you'll have plenty of time to get familiar with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you looking forward to coming back to Melbourne or are you enjoying at the moment hanging out at your uh, your former um, hub yeah. spot? We're both from Sydney. Yeah, we're so. both, we're both <laughs> doesn't we? But most of the boys didn't like, like we're, Melbourne yeah, we didn't want to, didn't want to come, but um, as soon as I like knew we'd come to Sydney for a few days, it was buzzing. We both were. Yeah. Have you had a chance to catch up with anybody or? Uh, well, yeah, I, I had, um, we both, yeah, I had my family at the game. I'm sure Jerry did too. Yeah. So yeah, we saw him after the game, which was good. And, um, hopefully see him maybe one, one or two more times before we leave. Well, it must've been extra special to, to score your first goal in, in front of your family in Sydney as well. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. It was yeah special. What did your folks say to you after the game? Um, my, my old man gave me nothing, <laughs> um, but, uh, no, nah, like I had, I had, like my mum was buzzing. I had a few of my cousins there. My, my, um, both my grandmas were there as well. So it was just, yeah, it was good to see everyone there cheering on. I only can only imagine what they were, what they were like when I scored a bit of a crazy bunch. So, I mean, there's the classic kind of football dad who's always uh, telling you what you did wrong instead of, uh, yeah, well, yeah, I thought, I, yeah, well, um, yeah, I've scored my first ever goal, and and I think the first thing you said to me was, "Yeah, what about the one after you put in the next?" Uh, 
<laughs> so, yeah, so. It, hey, it's on, on your weaker foot. Oh, uh, no, nah, that's, that's, uh, I've got to do better there. <laughs> 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 yeah. So have your family's been a big influence on, on both of you football wise? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they, they, they. any stories that come to mind from your, from your childhoods or so forth with your, uh, your folks either coaching you or taking you to games and things, anything that comes to mind? Oh, I would, uh, I would say what I want. Say I would have like a decent game when I was yeah. younger. Oh uh, yeah. I already know. My what hard, saying. my hard parents, no, you always think it's like my parents will always be the dad. But my mom, my mom used to always be, um, the more, what's it called? The yeah. harder, harsh one. So I'd come out of this, um, change room and be like, oh, we got to play good today. I'd go up to my dad, good game, good game, good game. I go to my mom, just the nod, like this. <laughs> Wait. Not good enough. Yeah, that was similar to me. Like I'd, I'd go have a game, like say when I was younger at United, and and I'd, I'd like I think I'd play okay. Like I knew I didn't play the best, and I'm like, oh no, I was dreading dreading getting in the car with that. And I'm, uh, I'd always sit in the back seat when I knew I didn't have a good one. <laughs> and um, yeah, just typical typical Croatian dad. He um, nah, he always he always look after me. He always mm. he's done yeah, he's done everything till this day for me. So. Yeah. And last on from me, um, what are your personal goals for, for the rest of the season uh, going as you have done? What, what do you want to achieve by the end of the campaign on an individual level? Um, or well, for me, it's obviously more, more minutes. Like that's, mm. that's the key goal. More minutes is more, more development. And yeah, hopefully a few more goals in there somewhere would be nice. Well, you're off to a good start. What about you, Jerry? I'll say the same, just more minutes under the belt. And as a team, I, I think we should, I want to, we want to yeah, win it. We want to win do. it. I think we can win it with this yeah. team and yeah. and that's that's the goal. Yeah. yeah. Well, top Fantastic. of the table, you're on your way. And uh, always great to see some of the youngsters coming through and making an impact on the first team. Congratulations to both of you. I um, mean, I guess commiserations on the draw, but, you know, you were both substituted at that point, so that's not your problem. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck for the rest of the season. Uh, enjoy being in a familiar environment with your family, and uh, we look forward to seeing you playing back down in Melbourne. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, guys. guys. We'll take a break here on The Green Room on FNR Football Nation Radio, presented by Simmons, the great Australian builder, and we'll be back with more on the other side of this break. Launch your global career in the career business. Study a master's degree online with unique access to the MCG and a big hitting Australian industry network. Brought to you by the Global Institute of Sport, who also have campuses at the iconic Wembley Stadium in London and Etihad Stadium in Manchester. Be one of the first Australians to get a football master's degree and join GIS's global network of football leaders. Apply now to start in February. February 2022. Learn more at gis.sport slash FNR. That's gis.sport slash FNR. We are more than engineers. We are more than project managers. We are more than surveyors. We are more than infrastructure specialists. We are more than planners. So, who are we? We are problem solvers, providing the highest quality service and results. We are a team of skilled professionals, focused on customer needs and outcomes. We are 23 years of industry experience, adhering to the highest safety standards. We are Melbourne, and we are right across Victoria. We are the Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. Lanco Group. We are more than you realise and we are ready to partner with you.
presented by Simmons. It's the Green Room on FNR, Football Nation Radio. Yes, the great Australian builders, Simmons Home is making this show possible each and every week. We thank them for their ongoing support. You can see them in the front of those glorious jerseys we've got in the background. Which is your favourite, Nick Hughes? I mean, I I love the away one, but, you know, the, the home colours are the, the club colours. So Can't I think beat it's, it. Yeah, it's, it's hard to go past that. And I do love the... That's fade down towards the uh, the, mm. the bottom of the shirt. It was interesting last night um, the uh, with the white shorts because of the um, kick clash. Know, the, yeah, the, you have to have different coloured shorts for the um, yep. assistant referees to be able to see across the line. So we're wearing the home kit, uh, shorts, uh, shirt and socks, but the away shorts, which did, is did a bit of an interesting look. Was it uh, a I bit mean, unconventional? It, it was a bit because the the away shorts have the that spray painted sort of pattern on ah, them, okay. which didn't quite fit with the uh, the home. But I th- I think the uh, the boys made it look good. Yeah, I think they rocked it. Um, yeah, I was I that didn't that detail escaped my attention. <laughs> by the way, didn't 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 twig to that. But uh, I think it actually should be called a kit blend. They're supposed to clash, right? You know, it's supposed to contrast. Yes. I don't know why we call it a kick clash. Anyway, topic for another day. <laughs> uh, back for the final time here tonight. It's been a pleasure to chat to CEO Chris Pelivanis and Young Guns Nick Milanovic and Jerry Skatardis about their experiences in the first team. They are absolutely buzzing, mm. not only to be playing first team football, but to be doing so in front of their families in Sydney. I mean, that's a bit special. Yeah, absolutely. You could, um, I think, particularly with Nick, uh, of course, bagging his first goal, you could tell... And you know, just on his face when we asked him about it, and even Jerry, you know, he gave the the very unassuming look uh, over his shoulder and mm. was uh, was waiting for, uh, for for what he was going to say, and we, which is great. I mean, and like Chris said as well, you can um, you can really feel a, a fantastic culture uh, mm. at the club and within the the playing squad. Um, you know, certainly whenever I'm out there. You can just see the guys, you know, bantering about and and I think what's particularly fantastic is the way that the 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 new signings and so the, the young guys that are taking that step up is they just fit in seamlessly and uh, everyone seems to be pulling in the one direction and it's uh, it mm. it's exciting, you know, we're I guess the with a, a shortish sort of season compared to to most other professional uh, football divisions around the world, we we are almost halfway through. And uh, it's it's been a great great first half, or great nearly first half. Yeah, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll look forward to to more. Yeah, and uh, facing the Western Sydney Wanderers on Saturday, five oh five p.m. Eastern kickoff time. Uh, that one's away from home. Uh, the club not playing back at home until the 20th of February. So uh, there's another game against Sydney against FC the Wanderers in, in there. And then Wanderers, <laughs> the return game. So Western Sydney are in action as we speak. Uh, it's currently nil-nil against Perth Glory. Uh, Mark Redan, the former boss of Western United, of course, in the dugout there. So that's going to be an interesting uh, reunion, to say the least. Mm. And... You know, I don't want to jinx it because we built up Daniel Sturridge <laughs> uh, and his visit to to, uh, to Amy Park. Yeah. Um, we, we really went great guns on the show and asked all the players about what it was going to be like to play against him and then he yeah, didn't, didn't poor, make an appearance for... Poor Benny Garucho was excited, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he wanted to get his shirt and then no dice, but well, we'll have Jack Rodwell uh, coming to, uh, to face Western United uh, on Saturday. Uh, playing as a number 10, I note, in this particular mm. fixture. Uh, I wouldn't say that's his, his strongest position, but, you know, uh, didn't get to see the Liverpool legend. We get to see an Everton legend. That's not, not quite the same. Yeah, well, I mean, if I think we're stretching the definition of, uh, of legend uh, on Jack Rodwell, maybe he's a Man City legend. <laughs> not a Sunderland, or a Sunderland not legend. Not a Sunderland legend, unfortunately. Not, a, not at all. Didn't go well but, for him. Um, but no, it'll, it'll be an intriguing game. And, and like, I, um, like I asked... Um, Nick and, uh, and Jerry, you know, you look at the Wanderers in uh, 11th or 10th now because they're, you know, the light te- ladder, yeah. te- technically uh, gaining a point at the moment. Um, you know, the, you look at their squad on paper and it certainly isn't the 10th or 11th mm. best uh, squad in the league. Uh, you mentioned Jack Rodwell. He, he's obviously a, a big name, um, although we talk about gaining a point. I believe the Wanderers might have just scored. Ooh, live goal updates here on uh, <laughs> yeah, Saturday. Um, but, yeah, I, you, you look at the squad, you know, you, Yugakovic, 
Broncos played for the Socceroos? Uh, or not yet? Never debuted. Never. And wow. that to me That's is crazy. a stunning one. That is wild. Uh, I think he's one of the best midfielders in the competition. Agreed. And closing him down and not letting him dictate the pace of the game that's going to be crucial on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's I've, I've always been a massive fan of his. Um, Troisi is obviously certainly a socceroo. Yep, scored um, a winner in an Asian Cup final. So yeah, for sure. Said there. Um, you know, Dimi Petrados, Terry Antonis have, have done great things in this league, not playing heaps at the moment, mm. both on the bench tonight. But it's a very strong squad. And uh, again, we, we mentioned that. That little turnaround that uh, mm. a team will often have with a new coach and, you know, we'll, we'll be expecting the Wanderers to, to come out firing. But the form that Western United are in, they um, they shouldn't be uh, fearful of, of, of any other team in the league. Absolutely not. And uh, you talk about the big names in the Wanderers squad, but I think Western United has the cohesion and the identity yep. as a team that uh, Western Sydney Wanderers haven't found so far this campaign. And maybe uh, the new manager bounce will play a part, but I'm thinking a win here is, is probably the, the odds-on prediction. Are you going to give me a score prediction for Saturday? Score prediction? Wow. Um, Just sprung that on you. Well, I mean, 1-0 has been the theme. Yes. Every win has been 1-0. Loves a clean um, sheet, the, does this Western but, United outfit. Of course. Last night was... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Last night was... A little the bit first, more open. First yeah. league match where we've scored multiple goals. Uh, obviously scored two against Newcastle in the, the FFA Cup playoff, which just feels like absolutely <laughs> ages ago. Years ago now. Um, but I'm I'll say I'll say two nil. Two nil. Two nil. I'm I'm going to go for the theme. I'm going to say one nil to Western United. Yeah, you, just, you, you could be right. I don't think it's going to be easy this one, but I think they've got just enough quality to squeak past a side that's still finding their feet uh, this season, almost a halfway mark. So it's not going to be easy, but uh, that's that's my prediction. Oh, I'm sticking to it. Uh, Heasy, it's been a, it. a pleasure to have your company on this show this week. If you missed any of today's show, it'll be available on the FNR Football Nation Radio podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts. Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get them. Everywhere. It'll be up very shortly. So if you want to hear from Milo and Jerry or Chris Pellivanis about the exciting things happening at the club, make sure you check it out on the podcast. But from us, it is goodbye for now. And we'll talk to you again next week. by Simmons. It's the Green Room on FNR, Football Nation Radio.